All right, so we're at WrestleMania 13. Uh, the card is headlined by Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart. Also, Legion of Doom returning versus uh, New Age Outlaws and APA. Psycho Sid versus Gold Dust. Stone Cold and Brian Pillman versus Stampeders. And The Undertaker versus Mankind. Uh, I'll talk about each of the uh, stories and what's been going on, why stories are why, during the show. Okay, so here the pre-show starts with a 10-man battle royal, and the winner was Jake the Snake Roberts. The other members were in the final four, Barry Windham, William Regal, Salve Vega. Barry Windham's alive, so it would come down to Jake, who's a heel, versus Barry Windham, who's a face. Uh, this is done just to make sure everyone gets on the card and gets everyone a chance. You know, storylines could develop from this. Like, say, if, let's say uh, Savio, like, you know, I just start getting, like, I think of a real cool feud for him. He could talk. It could turn into a storyline, like, in next year's WrestleMania. Like, he started off, like, last year I was on the pre-show. This year um facing The Undertaker. You know what I mean? It's just a good way to uh make sure everyone gets on the card and, you know, doesn't hurt them. Everyone, people can improve. As shown here, Jake Roberts, who's 40 years old, is improving. All right. So after that, we have Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart. This would air what happened last year to the uh, just Bret Hart winning the title versus Bader. Shawn Michaels won in Rumble. Their promos, you know, it could air a little 10 second sound bite of each of their promos. Their like confrontation, you know basic and has some like video probably Limp Biscuit even though they weren't popular on WrestleMania 13 so I don't know I don't know who's popular then I think that's like the year I was born all right so after that we get uh returning Legion of Doom defeating New Age Outlaws and APA I had them uh start off because that's a good way to start off you know you get pyro and then you hear oh what a rush and they come out and then you, or you, they could have Jesse James Rodo come out, Jesse James and Billy Gunn come out and do their shtick. APA come out, you know, to just, they walk straight in the ring, no nonsense, and then here, oh, what a rush. I think it would be a good way to get a pop, Red Warrior pop. I think I would have had Red Warrior come out, then uh, APA, the New Age Outlaws, but uh, LOD attacked the New Age Outlaws before their shtick was over. Very good rating. I expect uh, these teams to be the headliners of the uh, tag division for the forthcoming years, especially APA and New Age Outlaws. See how good Legion of Doom continues to be match wise. They're going to go far right in the first year at least. It'll be very like main event relevant a couple years. I'm going to change those pictures though. There's different ones I like. So after that, we get Owen and Bulldog after you know the Road Warriors match. Uh, promo about Stone Cold and Brian Pillman in their tag match. And this wasn't a coincidence. Alright, after that, Goldust cuts a promo on Psycho Sid. You know, Goldust is the weird one. Psycho is the crazy one. And the crazy one wins to end the feud. A good match for Psycho Sid and Goldust. Well, Goldust can have better, but a good match for Psycho. Uh, I don't know, I think he has star power to his name. So why not use it, and why not use it to my best advantage? So he's eventually going to get pushed lower down a card and maybe just released, but not yet because I think there's going to be big things for him in the forthcoming future. All right, right after that, we get the uh, Nation of Domination cutting a promo on Rocky, Rikishi, and Yokozuna. Okay, and then right after that, the match is... Nation of Domination versus Yokozuna versus Rock versus Rikishi. So what would happen is uh, Rock wouldn't take the pin. So during the match we see uh, the Rock, you know, maybe it's like Rikishi's down, Yokozuna's down, the Rock's at the ring, Rikishi has a big move in like D-Lo, and he's about to give the hot tag only for the Rock just to step off the apron or do something. The Rock turns on him pretty much. And here, the only problem is that he, the game said it would be bad turn, but I think it's going to be complete success. 
So here the Rock is now part of the nation. And, you know, he's going to be feuding with his ex-family members, I think, for quite some time. Because that's big. He this WWE acknowledges that this is their family. And for the Rock to say F you to that and turn on him. Okay, right after that, we get Brian Pillman, Stone Cold Cut and Promo. You know, I just imagine these two stand next to each other. Even though they were, like, kind of running together at this time. And then the whole Pillman got a gun angle and Stone Cold just beat the shit out of Brian Pillman. But, you know, I think these two played off each other well. They're best friends. Stone Cold's gone on record and said so many kind things about Brian Pillman. And, you know, I bet Pillman would do the same for Steve. So, they have their match versus the uh, Stampeders. And, actually, Owen Hart defeats Stone Cold with a handful of tights and they cheat to win. Uh, I think the Stampeders need to belt more. I expect more things than Stone Cold just to give him a tag win because he's not fighting with Bret Hart doesn't matter so why not have him lose and you build a storyline purpose and you're going to see what I mean in a little bit so right after that I think there should have been I think there was a promo I might have skipped over it here Ken Shermock has Triple H tap by submission with the ankle lock I was thinking of having Triple H win but there's been too many heels winning I think this would that uh, was three in a row with Psycho Sid, uh, Nation, and then the tag match. So you need a good win here. It doesn't hurt Triple H to tap out because once it, it's Hunter Hearst Hemsley and he turns to Triple H and he will. It's, you know, who the hell's Hunter Hearst Hemsley? Yeah, it'll be all irrelevant. But he's going to stay relevant. So he's just not going to be the upper mid card main eventer. Right after, okay, that, that's supposed to be a four to match. After the match, Ken Shamrock offers Triple H to shake his hand. Triple H accepts only a cheap shot at him. This is just a way for the crowd to understand this feud isn't over. Here, Mankind cuts a promo on Undertaker. We get a video hyping the match, which leads to the Undertaker vs. Mankind with the Undertaker winning by Tombstone. Uh, no scuttle, but nothing. Undertaker wins clean. No Paul uh, Bear turning, no Jake the Snake Roberts, none of that. But after the match, Jake runs out and joins Mankind in attacking the Undertaker. You know, once again, just to let them know, the crowd continues the feud and give Mankind and Jake the heat that they need. Because Undertaker, you know, make them look credible to take on the Undertaker, who is considered a monster then. So have him get beat down by these two guys almost repeatedly now kind of makes a big deal and this is going to set up what I want to do for next month okay here Shawn Michaels cuts a promo uh, uncharacteristically I didn't say a word right uh, decent rating Sh normally he, like, he cuts promos during the 80s I'm a little somewhat surprised but hey it is what it is I think after that we go to a video package we do hyping Shawn and Brad once again just talking about it's not the same one from the beginning now this could be them training compared to, you know, talking about how much they need it and blah, blah, blah. And then we go to the match, 99 rating. During the match, we see Owen Hart run in, attack HBK. British Bulldog also attacks HBK. And Bret Hart just joins in on him. Like, there's a ref bump. Like, we'll say Earl Hebner is a ref just for shits. So, actually, it was Dave Hebner. It was his brother. So, the Hebner is in the ref, you know, Sean accidentally super kicks him, then Sean super kicks Brett, only for Owen and Bulldog to run down and just beat the shit out of Sean. Bret Hart gets up and starts stomping on him with him, and then eventually he just puts him in some type of, you know, move and pins him one, two, three, and this is done to turn Brett heel. Uh, it was the right time to turn Brett, even though I'm heavy on the heel side. That just gives more room for guys like Savio Vega, like I said earlier, to uh, rise. Gives guys like Rikishi to make a name for himself. And <clears throat> this could be huge because Sean, you know, gives him the chase. They're 1-1 one, one at the big WrestleMania matches now. So, you know, it's SummerSlam, Survivor Series, even next year's WrestleMania if Brett stays around. They could be have a tiebreaker match. Kind of like the Rock and John Cena feud. How Rock won one, Cena won the next, so that leaves room for 
a tiebreaker if they ever want to go back to it. And then after that, we get uh, the Hart family celebrating three years after Owen and Brett had a classic match. So this shows the Hart Foundation is together. Notice Brian Pillman's not a part of them. And I don't see that happening as of now. Because I, I think uh, I know what I want to do with Pillman, but he's not going to be in the foundation. Maybe I'll sign Jim the Anvil, but then I don't need him. Because Stampeders tag champs and we got the world champ. So having Anvil in there doesn't do anything. Uh, very good show rating. I don't know if this would have been better than a real WrestleMania 13. It's not for me to say. I think it would have just caused Sean and Brett. Always the classic matches. Undertaker, Mankind. Classic match. Ah, what did Undertaker fought Psycho Sid in that? So that's an upgrade. Mankind, Vader, lost to, uh, went to DQ with Stampeders. So, you know, everyone's in a better storyline except Stone Cold. Stone Cold really hurt from this. Ken Shamrock was a referee in a high marquee match, though, so, you know. So, I think everyone really got the better end of this than what happened in real life. So, I'm thinking Brett and Sean Mankind. Because, you know, Mankind did the J.O.D. And, obviously, Brett and Sean. So, that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, WCW, I don't believe, had a pay-per-view this month. So, we have nothing compared to. Or, last night, the same night. So, we have nothing compared to. Uh, like I just said, Omega's founded. So, Matt Hardy's going to be the owner of that. Alright, so that's it for this episode. Tell me what you think of everything so far. Tell me you thought of WrestleMania. Would it have been better as a, a fan to watch than a real life one? And uh, thank you.